When it comes to growing in your career path and stepping up into higher levels of leadership, looking for new opportunities is nothing more than be becoming persuasive. And persuasiveness is a skill that can be learned, it can be is a skill that can be transferable as well. And one of the strategies that I teach my clients on becoming more persuasive is to look and see what works and what doesn't work. But the problem with that is as you're looking to see other people in their speeches, in their conversations, in their talks, sometimes we don't know what to look for. So in my new YouTube video series, what I want to share with you is a breakdown of speeches, of talks and presentations from other people, breaking it down so that you can slowly learn what to look for and slowly discover strategies that are currently working in the marketplace. Right? And the video that I'm going to be breaking down, the speech that I'm going to be breaking down today is the speech that made Obama president. So let's dive right in. Tonight is a particular honor for me because let's face it, my presence on this stage is pretty unlikely. My father was a foreign student, born and raised in a small village in Kenya. He grew up herding goats, went to school in a tin roof shack. His father, my grandfather, was a cook, a domestic servant to the British. His opening statement in that speech, he already employed one key persuasion strategy, and that strategy is called confirming their suspicions. Right? Because if you think about it, Obama, his, his audience is American voters. And for the longest time, American voters had a suspicion that someone like him, and he described it in detail, someone like him who is a minority, who comes from a background like that, father from Kenya and very humble beginnings, he's describing, he's painting the picture in his audience's mind that for the longest time, the American voters have been suspicious of whether someone like that could possibly be running for president and could possibly become voted in and lead the nation. So that is the very first strategy, persuasion strategy that he uses is to confirm their suspicions. Let's keep going. But my grandfather had larger dreams for his son. Through hard work and perseverance, my father got a scholarship to study in a magical place, America that shone as a beacon of freedom and opportunity to so many who had come before. The second strategy that I see here is how do you tie in your personal story to what the American people are looking for, to what your audience is looking for? And it was such a smooth transition. He talked about the principles that his father instilled and how that translate to the search for freedom, the search for autonomy, the search for having empowerment in the whole nation. So then if you're thinking about doing a presentation and one of your key opportunities is to persuade your particular audience and you're telling a story about your background. It could be a history of your employment. It could be the history of your involvement in the industry or in the company that you're speaking for. Think about that. How can I tie in my personal experiences with what we're trying to achieve here as a collective? Let's keep going. While studying here, my father met my mother. She was born in a town on the other side of the world in Kansas. Her father worked on oil rigs and farms through most of the Depression. The day after Pearl Harbor, my grandfather signed up for duty, joined Patton's army, marched across Europe. Back home, my grandmother raised a baby and went to work on a bomber assembly line. After the war, they studied on the GI Bill, bought a house through FHA, and later moved west, all the way to Hawaii, in search of opportunity. And they too had big dreams for their daughter. A common dream born of two continents. A couple of things that he did there, you heard it. He mentioned Kansas, he mentioned Hawaii, and you can hear the cheers from the audience in the background, right? So that is a connection to identity, and identity is built on values. So if you are standing and you're doing a presentation in front of your leadership team or in front of your higher ups, can you seek to understand what are their value structures? And as you are presenting your speech or as you're presenting your conversation, seed in their ways that you can speak towards that identity and speak towards their values. And they're going to relate to it. They resonate with it. And that's what you see, what you, what you hear 
hear in Obama's audience when they cheer because they've heard that call out that speaks to them and their highest values. What does it mean to be from Kansas? What does it mean to be from Hawaii? Right? And so he's able to address certain groups of audiences. And the larger your audience is, the more you're going to realize that the value structures are highly varied because no two people have the same value structure. But how can you speak towards key decision makers in your audience? So let's keep going. My parents shared not only an improbable love, they shared an abiding faith in the possibilities of this nation. They would give me an African name, Barack, or Blessed, believing that in a tolerant America, your name is no barrier to success. Once again, a re-engagement into confirming their suspicions, like someone like me with an African name, their suspicions that how can someone in a minority background be running for president? So that's a re-engagement. Now we're a minute, a minute and a half, just at the beginning of the speech still, but they've, he's re-engaged his audience back to a point that he made earlier and reconfirming their suspicions, right? So this is a continuous speech. Keep in mind that when you're persuading and it's a persuasive conversation or it's a persuasive presentation, the persuasion doesn't just happen at the end. End. And this is where it's important that how can you seed persuasive strategies throughout your presentation? And that's what you're seeing in the speech right now. So let's continue. They imagine, they imagine me going to the best schools in the land, even though they weren't rich, because in a generous America, you don't have to be rich to achieve your potential. They're both passed away now. So that was subtle, that was subtle, but I caught that. When he says, in a generous America, you don't have to be rich to be successful. What is that? That's the second persuasive strategy he uses, and that's called future pacing. Future pacing just means being able to paint the picture in your audience's mind. What is the future? What could it look like? We all understand as a community, as an audience members, as a group here, we understand what it looks like in the present, but what could it look like in the future? So in one swift sentence, in very one sentence, Obama was able to paint the picture of what the future could like and it looked like, and the future is desirable because he understands their value structures. So as you're pre creating your presentation or your speech, how can you speak towards that? How can you future pace your audience as well? And yet I know that on this night, they look down on me with great pride. They stand here, and I stand here today, grateful for the diversity of my heritage, aware that my parents' dreams live on in my two precious daughters. I stand here knowing that my story is part of the larger American story, that I owe a debt to all of those who came before me, and that in no other country on earth is my story even possible. And now we move to the third persuasive strategy right there, when he talked about, I don't know how my story could have ever been possible outside of here. And that is creating uniformity, right? So this is where you're having a creating a persuasive strategy on how we think as a collective. And I understand the where I am in this vision of the future. I understand where I am. And so what he's doing is that he's putting himself on the same side of the table as his audience. So then now when you're creating your presentation, you're creating your speech, what can you say? What can you share? A belief, a philosophy that you can share that puts you on the same side of the table as them. It doesn't put you higher than them. It doesn't put you across the table from them. It puts you on the same side of the table as them. And now you don't appear as somebody above them. You don't appear as somebody who is leader and untouchable to them. You appear as someone who is approachable, as someone who is connecting, as somebody who really gets them. So as somebody on the their level and that is the brilliance of what just happened there and that is uh, the third persuasive strategy so let's continue again tonight we gather to affirm the greatness of our nation not because of the height of our skyscrapers or the power of our military or the size of our economy our pride is based on a very simple premise summed up in a declaration made over 200 years ago we hold these truths to be self-evident. Now, that blurb there, is, it's one of those one by one factual understandings of the history of the American Constitution, the history of how America became united in their states. So this is another important part of persuasion is to get your facts straight. 
in your presentation as you're compare as you're as you're preparing for your speech or your conversation you want to be persuasive to share things that get the history of it straight it could be the history of the company that you're working for it could be the history of how that leadership team was formulated it could be the founding principles and the constitution that governs the higher up and the executives on that on the board of directors so what is it what is the piece of history that you can see into your presentation that demonstrates that you really understand you've done your research and you really understand the founding principles of the forefathers that came before you that we can have an idea and start our own business without paying a bribe that we can participate in the political process without fear of retribution and that our votes will be counted at least most of the time This year, in this election, we are called to reaffirm our values and our commitments, to hold them against a hard reality and see how we're measuring up. And this comes to the next persuasion strategy that you're just hearing right now. And that he's, he's very clear. Obama is very clear. What do I want my audience to do? When you're in a persuasive presentation and conversation, it, you have to be clear before you do your presentation. What do you want your audience to do? If you were able to successfully persuade them, what would it look like? What actions would they be taking? And so this is where you're noticing when Obama is talking about the election, the bills will be counted, right? We can, we can elect without fear of retribution. We can do voting without retribution. He's already seeding, planting a seed in his audience's mind exactly what he wants them to do. And he very cleverly inserted a sense of humor when he said, our bills will be counted, our votes will be counted. Well, at least most of the time, right? And humor, in my opinion, humor is not absolutely necessary to put in there. It doesn't mean that if you don't put it, tell any jokes or if you don't make people laugh, it doesn't mean that your, your conversation is less persuasive. It was just, if you do decide to put a sense of humor in it, do it in a way that is tasteful, tactful as well, just like what you're seeing here. I believe we can provide jobs to the jobless, homes to the homeless, and reclaim young people in cities across America from violence and despair. I believe that we have a righteous wind at our backs, and that as we stand on the crossroads of history, we can make the right choices and meet the challenges that face us. America, tonight, if you feel the same energy that I do, if you feel the same urgency that I do, if you feel the same passion that I do, if you feel the same hopefulness that I do, if we do what we must do, then I have no doubt that all across the country, from Florida to Oregon, from Washington to Maine, the people will rise up in November and John Kerry will be sworn in as president and John Edwards will be sworn in as vice president. And then so now we are towards the last to a minute and a half to two minutes of Obama's speech. The conclusion of your presentation is extremely important in solidifying in the minds of your audience whether or not they relate to you, resonate with you, whether or not they deem you trustworthy, credible, whether or not you have the charisma, the leadership as well, and the diplomacy that you've communicated well. This is the conclusion that wraps up everything. And one of the strategies that I'm hearing here in Obama's speech that made him president, one of his strategies is to be able to solidify where we can stand to be. And you notice he was listing all these things. We can provide jobs for the homeless. And one by one, he was listing all the things that he knew his audience members, the voters, American voters are his audience members. He knew that was highest in their values, highest in their priorities. Those are the things that they really wanna get a move on. So he was instilling intrinsic motivation. Because if something is highest in someone's values intrinsically, they're gonna be intrinsically, naturally motivated to move towards it. So when you're giving a presentation and you want to persuade your higher ups, you want to persuade your board of director or your stakeholders to move a certain direction, what are their top priorities? And what can you share in terms of the things and demonstrating that you understand what they want to achieve? Can you articulate them in a diplomatic way? Can you relay it back to them in a way that is encouraging? So this persuasion strategy is called encouraging their dreams. Right, so remember, when he started his speech in the beginning, the first persuasion strategy that he used was to justify, confirm their suspicions. And now at the end of his speech, he is encouraging their dreams. So now let's wrap up his speech. This country will reclaim its promise and out of this long political darkness, a brighter day will come. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. Thank you. 
And when he wrapped up your speech, speech, what he did was he expressed a heartfelt gratitude. A gratitude in a way, articulated gratitude in a way that was appropriate in the way that he received it. God bless, which is the phrase, God bless America. So as you are summarizing and expressing gratitude at the end of your speech, at the end of your presentation, how can you express your gratitude in ways that create a shared language with your audience? And those are the persuasive strategies. If you found this content helpful, and remember, as you're listening to this, jot down some notes on what are some persuasive strategies. Jot down some notes on how can I apply this to my presentation, my speech as well. And if you have a video, a speech, a talk, a conversation out there that you want me to review, drop it in the comments below, and I'm happy to create more videos like this in the new video series where I break down speeches and talks. Remember to ring the bell notification so that you can be notified every time, every single week, I release new videos like this and so much more. I'll see you in the next video.